All right, well, we'll officially get started. Hi, and welcome to today's presentation. Thank you for joining us. I'm Micah Ogburn, I'm with ISSA. I'm glad you're able to participate in today's uh, presentation on social media. This is our second webinar on digital marketing demystified. And it's brought to you by Legend Brands, as well as ISSA, the Worldwide Cleaning Industry Association, as well as our media brands, Clean Facts and Cleaning and Maintenance Management. Today's presentation wanted to be very valuable to, to all of those who attend. So if you have questions during today's presentation, please ask them in the chat in the Q&A. We'll have a session at the end of the answering all your questions. Um, and so with that said, I want to hand it over. It's my privilege to introduce Ron Cates from Legend Brands. And Ron, it's all yours. Thank you, Micah. Thank you, ISSA. Thank you, Clean Facts. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Mike, I, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I, I kind of knew we'd be doing a second one based on the comments from the first one. So many people were shouting out my name, begging for more. I, I knew we'd have to do an encore. I, I still remember the comments. So a lot of them said, you know, more Ron, more Ron, more Ron. So, you know, we're, we're back. All right. Hopefully <laughs> well, you're laughing Thanks there. for coming back and thanks for agreeing to share your wisdom with all of us. I'm committed to the bit, always. Hey, most of you know me from Legend Brands. Some of you might know me from Constant Contact. I was there for more than a decade. You might know me from Athlons, the golf shoe company I helped create. But my most rabid fans know me from the TV show Bar Rescue, where I am the social media expert for the show and, and for the tour and uh, that we do. Uh, let's jump in, though. We're going to get right into this. Today, instead of focusing on you know, the, the what and the how and the when, we're going to cover all those. But... I want the primary focus to be on the why. So I'm going to start out with a tale of social media and groceries, a true story. I have a favorite grocery store, just like all of you do. Uh, for me, it's Safeway. And if you don't have a Safeway in your area, don't sweat it. It's just a grocery store. The reason I like it is it's close to my house. Uh, they have a lot of stuff. It's clean. The people are friendly. That's all I need. My, my bar on grocery stores is not very high. I'm not a gourmet. Now, these things, this experience that I get when I go there, that doesn't happen by accident, and it doesn't happen without a cost. They invest a lot of time, money, and resource to give me that experience. You know, if people don't clean automatically. They're, they're paid to clean. They're paid to restock. It takes time. And as you've probably found, anybody who has employees, they're not always automatically friendly. You have to kind of teach them some things, you know, some social skills in that way. So 10 years ago, before social media got really big, Safer was making this huge investment, just hoping that I would come back. And their, their pie in the sky dream scenario would be that I would be at a party and there's a small circle of people talking about groceries. And I tell them how much I love Safeway. And what are the chances of that happening? And gosh, that'd be the most boring party ever. But that was their pie in the sky dream. Today with social, that cocktail party, that party circle is now on steroids times millions. The mass of this is unbelievable. And the power behind it is incredible. So I want you to learn how to use social media to your advantage. Your, your, your customers, uh, you've done all kinds of great things. We could stop this webinar right now and say, hey, I want you in the chat to tell me about all the times you've been over backwards to make a customer really happy. And you would have tales lasting for all day about you did crazy things to make a client or a customer happy. And I ask you, well, then what did you do? Like nothing? No, you have these people who want to become an advocate. They're fans of yours. They want to go advocate on your behalf. Make that easy. You know, ask them. Hey, would you mind posting that on social or can I quote you or can I grab my camera and just capture this real quick? Social is not complicated. It's been around forever. Email is a form of social media. Before any of that existed, before there were even televisions, people would gather at the back gate, the fence, and they would talk about things, what's going on. So social media has been around forever. 74% of shoppers use social media to guide them in a purchase. They go online to find out. And the reason they do that is because we don't trust ads anymore. Only 14% of us trust advertisements, but 78% of us trust a recommendation online from a stranger. 90% of it's somebody in our network. Now, if you're skeptical, think about this Yelp. I don't know anyone on Yelp, but I go there to look at the restaurant reviews before I eat at the restaurant because I trust these strangers more than I trust the owner of the restaurant 
to be honest about the food and the experience. So 74% of this, this is our guide. 43% of us actually buy a service, contract with somebody if that was shared by a colleague in a, in a favorable way. And we have more than 250 friends on Facebook. That's an average. So think about this. Just do that math. The number of people who look at social, the number of people who talk about their purchases, the number of people who buy because of a social network post, and the fact that everybody has at least 250 people in their network. What you have is you have thousands of people ready, willing, and able, wanting to be an advocate on your behalf. And who are you going to trust? An ad or you or someone who's in your network that you know? And here's the best part. Who's your very best prospect? It's someone a lot like your customer. Who do your customers hang out with? Who do they network with? People like them. So not only are they becoming this independent third-party advocate, they're doing precise targeting to your very best prospect and potential customer. They spend more. They spend 67% more if they feel like they have a relationship with you. Now, this is from Harvard. I trust Harvard Business School. This is their research. They will pay 67% more for the same thing to where you're not competing on price anymore if they feel they have a relationship with you. It, and, and that just has to be because they follow you on social media or they're on your email list or they've seen your posts. So this makes a really big difference. And some of you are skeptical. You're saying, well, nobody's going to pay 67% more. I would never do that. Sure you do. You do it and I do it all the time. I'm a serious tennis player. I'm not very good, but I'm very serious. There's a store I go in there all the time. Now, I spent a ton of money there. A ton of money there. I could shop online or drive around town and save money on shoes and strings and rackets, but I don't because I feel like I know them. And you say, well, that's really personal. This is more mundane or this is more in a, an essential purchase. Something as mundane as gasoline, I can go to a four corner intersection in the US, four gas stations. I'll decide which one to shop at, not based on the price or the color of the pumps, but who works behind the counter. If I like them, if I feel like I know them, that's where I shop. You can become that type of destination as well. Social media and email combined will do that. Social media do a lot of it on its own. Social media and email work together really well to amplify each other. That's why I still advocate so strongly for email marketing. So how are you gonna get started? First, you have to have a goal. Like, you know, what are we actually trying to accomplish and how will we measure it? To me, all marketing should be measurable. I mean, ideally it should all be measurable so you can see if it's working or not. Know who you are and portray yourself consistently. And this is kind of a big core piece of what I wanna get across today. So we know about branding. And if we, have a, if we have a discussion about branding, a webinar on branding, it's gonna be $500 to attend the session. So I'm just gonna change the word, persona. What's the persona of your business? If it was a real thing, a real person, what language would it use? What language would you not use? That's the way we communicate in social and an email. It's not taking your print marketing stuff and copy and paste it into a post. It's a real voice. And you have to decide what that is. You know, What is your brand? What's important to you? What do you care about? What's critically important to you? How are you going to communicate? What does your brand signify? What's the story behind your brand? You know, what's the why? That's what we want to communicate. So today, this has become more critical than any other time in history. Today, we don't know our neighbors' names. You know, we, we buy from the cloud. Uh, we, we purchase from entities. We don't want to be a black box. We want to connect. We, we yearn to connect with real people. So it's very important that your brand, your communication, your persona, that there's a voice there that sounds real and authentic. You need to know where your customers or members are. We'll talk about that in more detail later. You have to tell your customers where you are. So you have to make it obvious that we're on Facebook and we're on LinkedIn or wherever you might be. So a lot of your other communications will have links to that. So in my email, I will probably include links to my Facebook page, to my Twitter feed, uh, same thing in any emails that you send out or on your uh, website. Uh, don't just join conversations, add value to them. So, you know, here's the neat part. Everybody on this call, if you've done this business for a year or more, you're an expert and certainly an expert compared to your customer. So share that expertise. Don't be afraid to give away intellectual property. Show them that you know more about this than anyone else and they will do business with you. Then right away, if this is live, I get pushed back. Well, then they're just going to go somewhere else where it's cheaper. 
There's been studies on this. Do they do that ever? Yes, it's about four to 6% of the time. So they're way more likely to buy from you if you demonstrate you know what you're doing. Share that in social. Give away tips and hints and stuff that nobody else knows. And respond in a timely manner. So you need to monitor your social networks. And when there's a comment on a post, you have to go and respond to that comment. Now I am gonna give you some advice. On occasion, there could be a negative comment. It's, it's possible, right, that, they, that something didn't go right. My recommendation is you don't want to air your dirty laundry on the social platform. So in the most concise way uh, possible, take it offline. Hey, I've, I've read what you said. I, I'm going to fix it. Just reach out to me. Here's my email address or direct uh, message me. You know, rather than get into some long conversation online that could turn negative, just fix it and, and take that offline. They're way more likely to post something positive about you when you do than they would in the first place. All right. Most businesses, especially smaller businesses, are still stuck in the marketing mode of buy my stuff. All their marketing is buy my stuff, buy my stuff, we sell stuff, buy from me. Marketing evolved at some point, and I think the turning point was around 1976. Nike, you've heard of them, they're kind of big. Um, they were doing about $5 million a year in sales, and this was a typical Nike ad. We've got these cool shoes, buy our shoes. They hired a new agency in 76. They made a change. And this became their, their new look. This was a 1976 back full cover page of Runner's World magazine. There is no finish line. The message is we're runners too. We get it. So there's no buy my stuff. And, you know, these shoes are $29.99. You should buy them. They're on sale. It's not promotional. It's just we get it. We're you. Did this work? Yeah. In 2022, they did... Uh, uh, sorry, that's a misprint. My bad. They did $47 billion in 2022. And today, when you watch a Nike ad on television, you don't even know what it's for until the end when you see the swoosh or the just do it. So it's real important to let people connect with you as some sort of human voice instead of just an entity. Now, a lot of you have objections to doing social media and to doing it well. I'm going to dismantle every single one of those starting right now. First one, I'm never going to have millions of fans, so this is not worthwhile. That's a huge mistake. One, your followers will increase over time, especially as you provide good content. But more importantly, your followers have followers, and their followers have followers. In some cases, your followers have a ton of followers. And in some cases, their followers have even more followers. So the virability of this is unlike anything we've ever seen. Now. More than a decade ago, uh, when I was really busy on social before I was just doing it for companies, but doing it for my own on my own, um, I got to about 14 million Twitter impressions a year. But I only had about 3,500 or so followers. It's pretty nice when somebody like Howard Stern retweets you, you know, um, or uh, some other uh, Richard Branson retweets you. So it's not just your followers, it's their followers and their followers, followers and their followers, followers, followers that matter. So don't get so caught up in your number of followers. That's going to grow over time. It's going to grow organically. You can't really buy it. But think in terms of how far is this really going? And the reality is it's going much farther than you'd ever imagine. How about, I don't know what to say. I'm not a writer. Um, most of you didn't get into this business because you wanted to write. In fact, if anybody on here loves to write, I'd say from now on, just let everybody else do let that person do their social form. I'm not a great writer. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Well, what I found out really early is that perfection is the bane of social media. It's about being real, transparent, and authentic. Plus, there's a big bonus. We have what I call digital forgiveness. We know that Siri misunderstood you or autocorrect did something silly, and, and we automatically correct it to what it's supposed to have been. Like, I remember a few months ago, I tweeted, or I didn't tweet, I, I messaged my wife. This works with text messaging as well. I texted my wife, pick up some red swine on the way home. And no, she didn't arrive with some like red piggies. Uh, you know, she arrived with some red wine. So don't get so crazy. This is about being real, not about being perfect. But I'm not saying don't be perfect on purpose. You know, be you, be real. Come up with stuff to say, here's a pretty good example. 
you know, to Wendy's, how much does a Big Mac cost? Wendy's replies, your dignity. It's two words that didn't take a long time to respond. You know, one of my most favorite posts ever, you know, especially when you say, oh, I don't have time. This took seven seconds to type. It's from a, a fruit market, a vegetable and fruit market. It's 3 a.m. Do you know where your fruit is? And you laugh and say, well, come on, that didn't have any impact. That's just funny. Well, within minutes, there are 48 likes. By the way, people are 90% more likely to buy from you if they've hit the like button. It's a personal investment. All their friends are going to see it. So we take hitting the like button very seriously. Within an hour, there are over 100 comments. Within a week, there are more than 1,000 comments. I own this fruit stand. I'm going to scan through those in minutes, literally minutes. And I'm going to find out so much stuff that I couldn't find out any other way. Uh, they love my fresh watermelon. Parking's a real pain on Saturdays. I didn't know that. I can fix that. Feedback is a gift. So one of the most important things about posting is the comments you get back. You know, reading those comments so you know how to respond to issues that are affecting your business. You want to know, sure, that people love you, but you also want to know what you can fix and make better. Now, when it comes to time, and again, I'm, I'm pretty time strapped as well. It's difficult to find time to post sometimes. So here's another uh, two tips. One is more than half the content on social media isn't something you wrote. It's something you found that you reposted, you know, curated content. So as expert in the industry, you're always reading stuff that might be pertinent to your customers and prospects. You can just repost those. So it doesn't all have to be original content that you wrote. You will be viewed as an expert if you're the arbitrator of content. You found it and you posted it. So they just have to turn to you to get great content because you're finding it for them. Additionally, there are tools out there that allow you to create all your posts and schedule them in the future if this is useful to you. For example, let's say the only time I have to post is Saturday afternoon. You don't want all your posts to go out Saturday afternoon. So there are tools like Hootsuite and Buffer that allow you to create posts and schedule them to go out. This one's going out Monday at noon. This one's going to go out Thursday at 3 p.m. Let me show you both of those real quick. There are many others as well. But Hootsuite and Buffer both have free trials or free versions, and they allow you to create posts that go out in the future. I love this feature so much, I can't begin to tell you. I'm 65. I have four kids. I have posts set up going out to them 40 years from now just to scare them. You know, I, I'm still watching you. You know, what are you doing? Uh, and of course, for business, it's even more practical than just having fun with your kids. Where should I be? This is the big question. There are literally today more than 1,000 social media platforms. You can't even know about all of them. You know, you haven't heard most likely of Audio, Boo, or Quick, um, and you don't need to know about them. Your audience is going to let you know. So here's how to get started out. First, Facebook. Facebook is the biggest social media platform in the world. Uh, so you need to be there. You need to create a page, a business page, and you need to post to it uh, once or twice a day. You need to monitor it. If you decide to do paid for advertising, the reality is Facebook is a free marketing tool, has really lost a lot of its value. Now, today, not everyone in your network sees what you post, only if they engage with you often. Um, so paying for posts and for ads on Facebook actually has a very good return on investment with one huge caveat. What's so good or bad about Facebook, depending on how you look at it, is they have so much data. They know everything about us. So if you truly know your, your target customer in a very precise way, you can create ads on Facebook that target that very specific customer. So if you're good at knowing who your customer is very precisely, and if you're good at creating highly targeted posts, marketing posts, then Facebook ads are for you and you'll get a great return on investment on those. Instagram, maybe. I think for this audience, yes, Instagram makes sense. It's, you know, photo and video sharing. It's those aha moments that you share. It's about once a day. In a lot of cases for you, it's that customer that you delighted. You delighted them. So you pull out your phone and you say, hey, do you mind repeating what you just said about how great a job I did and how amazing it was and how I got you back to whole again so fast? Right? Maybe those aren't the exact words, but you know what I'm saying. They have these wonderful things to say about you. 
I know a lot of you re rely on referrals for your business. Re referrals just don't happen automatically. Consumers don't think that way. You have to remind them. You have to ask for it. If you want it, you have to ask for it. If you don't ask, you don't get. Same thing here besides referral. Hey, do you mind if I, I capture that on video or can I quote you and put that on social media? They're going to say yes. I mean, 99, or I don't know. Uh, all but once out of a million times, they're going to say yes. Twitter. Twitter has lost some value lately. So I'm not as excited about Twitter as I once was. And personally, I love it as a platform, as a business marketing tool. It was okay, but it's gotten weaker, uh, but it still has value. Now, here's the catch to Twitter. To get full engagement, you post at least five times a day. It turns out with almost no endpoint, the more you post on Facebook, the more engagement you, I mean, the more you post on Twitter, the more engagement you get. Now, that doesn't mean for a moment that if you post once a week, you get nothing. Or if you post once or twice a day, you get nothing. You still get a lot, but maximum return starts at about five times a day. Totally your call. Just don't think you have to do five times a day to get something. That's not true. LinkedIn, one of my favorite platforms, especially for business to business, post about twice a week. If you decide to do paid advertising on LinkedIn, it can be incredibly value, valuable. So if you know, for example, the domain name, you know, the email addresses of a business you're trying to target on LinkedIn, you can target everybody with that email address, you know, the at myprospect.com. You can also target people by job title. So LinkedIn is a really great place for paid advertising. It's also a great place to be organically. It's about showing off your expertise. It is definitely not the place to sell. It's not buy my stuff, buy my stuff. It's here's how you fix this, or here's why this equipment is important, or here's what you need to do to prevent mold, or here's how you clean up after water damage. You know, show off your expertise. People are going to buy from you. YouTube. YouTube is its own category. It's so incredibly powerful. So one uh, people spend more attention uh, when it's video as compared to text or just an image. In, in email, there's a hierarchy. Just text in an email gets X amount of engagement. If you add images, it gets about three to five times the engagement. If you add a video to the email, it's 10 times plus the engagement. YouTube is high engagement, easy to do. They should be less than two minutes. Um, and there are exceptions to that. If you're trying to explain a process or a project, uh, a product, it can be longer. But these are short attention span. We communicate today in a whole different way than we've ever communicated in history. Years ago, I mentioned I'm 65. Well, years ago, people used to write letters. When I was in college, um, the only way I could communicate with my girlfriend who went to another college was to, we wrote letters back and forth. If you're young, you might not even know what a letter is. So then we went to email, right? Email, this was a lot better. You know, it's a lot shorter, a lot more concise. Well, that was too long. So we decided to do text messages and text messages were way, way shorter. Well, wait a minute. In the last few years, texting is too difficult. So now we have these emoticons and emojis that tell you everything I'm thinking and feeling because we won't even take the time to type it. We use these little symbols and images instead. So communication today is more concise than ever. You have to communicate in a style your customers and prospects like, not what you grew up on. So concise communication on YouTube, huge engagement. Now, the quality, the reality is, yes, better quality videos get better engagement. And it's, it's a nice um, face for your customer to see that you're a professional organization. But we do have a little bit lowered expectation as consumers. We're willing to accept well done, you know, iPhone videos, you at least hold it steady, put it on a tripod. Uh, and maybe you don't have a mic. Um, so maybe it's not perfect. It's not Oscar quality, but that's okay. Um, as long as it's good and you put some time and thought into it, there's not a bunch of pauses that you didn't edit out, that sort of thing. So you can create a very viable YouTube video in a very short time and without a ton of expertise. Now, the bottom line to where should I be is, here's a great way to find out, email marketing. I love email marketing, as you heard in my previous presentation, for a ton of reasons. Uh, one of the biggest being that it has the highest return on investment of any form of marketing. Last year, it was more than $43 for every dollar invested. That's a huge return on investment. But one of the things I really love about email is some of these email marketing services allow you to put in what's called a, a social share. Yeah, And so 
You can actually put an icon into your email, you know, for each article you put in there where they can click on a button and they can share that article or your entire email with their entire social network. Now that's great because your clicks go up and your reach increases by about 300%, but here's the best part of it. There's reporting on that. So when they click on that, you get a report later that tells you who clicked on what, how often. So you'll discover from that, wow, nobody shared this on Facebook, but a ton of people shared it on LinkedIn. This is one of the very best ways to determine which social networks have the most impact for you. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and you should be doing email marketing anyway. So this is just an additional bonus. The other way is when you post things to different platforms, you look at the amount of engagement and you spend less time in the places you're getting little engagement and more times we're getting the most engagement. That's pretty logical. When are you going to post? Again, just like with how many times a day you post, uh, these ideal times don't mean that if you post on some other day or some other time, you don't get any engagement or impact. These are just kind of the most ideal times. So on Facebook, and again, this uh, presentation is being recorded. You'll get to look at it later in case you don't have time to write this down now. But on Facebook, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 9 to 10 a.m., noon to 1, 4 to 5 p.m. I've got it listed here for Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. It tends to be times when people aren't super busy at work. So where we see huge spikes in social media are, you know, Friday at 3 or 4 p.m. because they're still at work, but they've shut down for the day and they've gone social. Now, I know you've got a lot of questions. Mike is going to read some of those questions to me. So thank you. Stick in here. Stay with me. I promise there's going to be some pretty amazing content uh, in the question time. Great presentation, Ron. Thank you. A lot of a lot of good nuggets in there. A lot of takeaways that I, I know will be very valuable to our audience. Um, one question that came in, and, and you kind of touched on it when uh, you were talking about some some of the messages to post. Um, but the question is, what types of permission do we need to obtain from a customer to post images of a project that we did in their home or business or or or, or what have you? Yeah. So, it, if you're taking a video of it. You ask them on camera, hey, is it okay if I videotape this? They say yes. Um, if it's photo, I, in this case, you just have to ask. I, I've never seen, again, I'm not an attorney, Micah, so keep that in mind. In audience, Ron is not an attorney. This is not legal advice. But in those type of instances, as long as you've let them know and they've said yes, I think you're fine. I've never seen that go awry. So I don't need a permission slip or a, a special waiver. If it makes you more comfortable to have one, I'm sure it's easy to find one online. But um, anything that you can see from public, you can record anyway in post. So it, okay. it shouldn't be a problem. Right. No, thanks. That, that answers the question. Um, you know, most of the industries that, that we're in uh, involved with through ISSA and, and, and with Legends, most service based. Um, what do you find, you know, for those business owners are the most effective posts? Yeah, stuff that gives them great information and great advice. And I know we're afraid sometimes to give away what we consider to be intellectual property. You know, here's how we do it. But the here's how we do it is what makes you different. And that makes you want to buy from you. You know, so uh, I'm trying to think of some specific examples that I can share. It, it constant contact, you know, we did seminars on, and we told people how to do email marketing. Like we told them everything we knew about how to do email marketing well. Well, 85% of the room signed up to become a customer without even an ask. So people are a lot more interested in, well, first of all, they have to like you, then they have to like the company, and thirdly, then they'll like the product. So that's kind of the order. So that's why I love the idea of putting out my persona or a company's persona brand, you know, online and being willing to share information, even close to not, not the, the maybe not the most secret, secret, secret stuff, but process things, how to do things well. I think you can share that all day and it shows that you care. It shows your level of attention to detail, and it shows your expertise. I want this audience to show off their expertise on social media. That, that's, that'd be the key thing. One, show that they're a real human being. There are, there are real faces here, real people behind this business. It's not just a, a black box somewhere. And two, that we really do know our stuff. Yeah, that, that's great. Because the, these audiences, whether it's cleaning or restoration, I mean, it's technical. Most people think it, it's not. It's just, uh, it's not. It's, it, there's not science behind it, but there definitely is through through everything, really, in the cleaning and, and restoration space. Yeah, Mike, uh, I'm going to add to that. Um, 
I would add that, yes, all those pieces matter a ton, but I think it's also important to add an undercurrent of why that those matter, right? Um, this is a spec on this product. The reason it's spec this way is because of this practical application. This is gonna save you time, save you money. It's gonna allow you to get the job done better. You're gonna get more referrals. I mean, it, depending on who your audience is, that there's a why in it for them. You know, if my house is flooded, I, I want to be whole again as soon as possible. So this equipment, if it's, it's for if it's for that type of customer, you know, I'm a contractor and I'm doing it for that type of customer. Um, they want to know how it's going to turn out. You know, they want the the good the good ending. So that has to be included in there, not just the technical stuff, but the why we pay so much attention in detail and why we spend so much money on the very best equipment. It's for a reason. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this kind of goes in line with your personas that you're creating for, for the company and, you know, the leaders within an organization. But, you know, do you recommend, who do you recommend to own that social media for that company, for that individual kind of, who do you have? Posted yeah. So it depends on the size of the company, of course. Um, with a larger company, I don't think it's a good idea to allow everyone in the in the company to post on social media about the company's business. I think that should be pretty restricted because people mean well, but they can make an error that could have some consequences to it. So it should be a very small group of people that you know and trust are going to be posting the right messaging. But whoever isn't whoever oversees marketing for that organization should be very clear about what this voice is. You know. Our brand would use these words. They would never use these words or terms or phrases, but they would use these. Um, our brand is, and by the way, Legend Brands has now 16 brands and they all have their own voice and their own story. Um, they're very authentic and transparent. Um, so if it's, some are more fun than others, some are more serious than others. You know, it depends on, on the brand and the product. Um, some are more technical than others. It depends on the audience. Obviously, the way you communicate to an audience depends on how that audience wants to communicate. Uh, that's always going to be the number one rule when it comes to communication anywhere, but especially on social. Yeah, great. Great. Thanks. Great answer. Um, you touched on this quick, but the question did come through. You know, I'm strapped for time. I'm a busy business owner. Which platform should I use? How do I keep up with all of them? You know, how do I select where, when and where to spend my time? Yeah. So using some of the guidelines I touched on, you know, the biggest one on earth is Facebook. I'm going to be there. I think for this audience specifically, I'm going to be on YouTube. Now, the neat part is that if there's a platform that's become important for my industry, for, for my customer base, my prospect base, and I'm not there, they're going to let me know. Hey, I, I follow you on YouTube. How come you guys aren't on Instagram? You should really be on Instagram or XYZ platform. So the neat part is people are vocal and they'll reach out to you, especially if they like your content because they're going to want to see that content in other places. That's going to be the key is just listening. That's why you have to monitor your social platforms. So you look not just at uh, your content that I put there, but how are people responding to it? You know, what are the comments? I need to respond to those comments to show them that I care. Otherwise, if I don't, if there's no response, it kind of shows I don't care. In that same vein, the same canned cut, uh, copy and paste response that I see that all the time. I think that's a bad idea. Hey, thanks for visiting our restaurant. We're glad you had a good time. It, you can make it a little bit different every single time, or at least involve that particular poster, what they talked about in them into your response post. And not every single post has to have a response. I, I'm not saying that. But on occasion, if it's particularly positive or if it's negative, those need a response. Yeah. No, and, and, you know, those real transparent, authentic, just, you know, I think those are huge keywords with everything that we do um, moving forward. So um, the question just came through um, and, and maybe this is lives somewhere. Maybe you can share it. Um, are there demographics for each platform that are kind of uh, known or available out there? Just kind of review. Yes. So if you simply Google Facebook demographic or Twitter demographics, you, you'll get a lot of data. There's tons of data. It's surprising though, Micah. Um, so over time, almost every platform tends to trend to an older age group over time. So you know, Instagram started out, it was mainly a younger audience. Now the 40 to 55 is like one of the heftiest audiences on Instagram. 
Uh, Twitter went the same way. Some people think, well, so my customer prospect is older and they're not on any of these things. They don't do email. And, and that's just, that's so wrong. It turns out that, you know, today, a lot of times, you know, people are buying a mobile device or a laptop or a computer solely to do social and email. I mean, older, older people, like I, I have a joke, you know, it's not that funny, but you know, at 70, you don't hop out of bed to, to and go to Best Buy to buy a laptop because you want to master PowerPoint. Okay, at 70, you don't hop out of bed, period. But the reality is, you know, people in, in older age groups are buying laptops or buying um, tablets solely to do email and social because that's where their friends and family are. So literally everybody is there. And every five-year period, you'll see a transition from uh, a younger age group to an older age group when it comes to adoption. Yeah, and I think, you know, to that point, our whole world's become omni-channel. Yes, you know, my parents read a newspaper, I don't, but we also still, to your point, use Facebook, use all the other social channels. So. Micah, you just made the best point. So these different, uh, marketing used to be so easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, 40 years ago, if you had an ad in the newspaper, I read it because I read the newspaper front and back every single day. I don't know the last time I did that. You've got people who will read a newspaper, a magazine, watch TV. Some listen to the radio. Some listen to satellite radio. Um, they're on Facebook. They do email. They want a direct mail piece to come to their house. All right. That's a lot of stuff. Tell me right now, though, what segment of your audience can you afford to ignore? You know, what segment are you willing to ignore? The one that you can afford to ignore? And, and that's none. So we might not have grown up with these different ways to communicate. They might not be our favorites, but I think we need to spend some time there if that's where our audience is. Great, great. Uh, and you talk about, you know, different demographics using different channels. And, and as they come out, it seems like a younger group. The next question is about TikTok, right? So how do you feel about TikTok? Uh, this is some somebody who has a janitorial company. Yeah, I, I want to post some things about cleaning. Uh, yeah, I have a, I have mixed feelings about this. Um, social networks that are newer or younger audience based um, tend to tolerate promotional content the least. So um, if it's purely promotional, it's not going to be well received. I, I, I'll give you one of my favorite personal platforms. It's Reddit. I spend a ridiculous amount of time on Reddit. But if you go in there and post something about how great your business is and people should buy from you, uh, you're going to be like torn apart in the comments. They're going to hate you now. So I just spent time and I just invested time to make prospects mad at me to where they'll never do business with me again. That's just silly, right? So some of these platforms don't have a high tolerance for promotional content. So try to be um, like informational with a subtle... Um, undercurrent of some promotional content. Again, I think when you tell them, when you show that you know everything about how to do something, and I go through that first, and then at the end I go, oh, and by the way, you know, I, I am available to do this. I, I don't even know if you have to say that. They know that. We, we know that you sell something. We know you have a service. You don't have to hit us over the head with that. Tell us what makes you different, what makes you unique, why, the, why I should buy from you, not, you know, don't tell me to buy from you. Just tell me why I should buy from you. And those are different things. Sure. Absolutely. Hey, here's <laughs> another important thing. That's why another reason I like email so much, email and social work together. Yeah. People tolerate promotional content and email much more than they do in social. So I have a saying, email is how you monetize social. So I follow you on social, tons of educational content. Because of that, I sign up for your email list. That doesn't mean I can do pure buy my stuff emails, but I can certainly put in a, a greater percentage of promotional content mixed in with informational content in an email. So I really want everybody to be looking at me on both platforms. Got it. Got it. Here's a question all about uh, tactics and, and how somebody would post stuff. But is there, are you aware of a, a program to help video editing that a not a power user would be able to leverage for, for what they're doing on social? Yeah, so, well, there are some free, you know, desktop-based programs that are quite good. There are also some inexpensive ones, but the reality is most of your phones or your operating systems have one built in. So, um, you know, there's a YouTube studio that is free where you can edit your YouTube videos. It's built in. It's pretty robust. It's really easy to use. So almost every platform has something built in. If not, your phone has something built in that is very serviceable. 
And it's not till you get up to a much higher level where you're adding you know, graphics and special effects and other things that you need to probably buy one. Got it, great, thanks. Probably just a couple more questions, Ron. Um, one more, one here is from, you know, can I hire this out? Are there agencies, are there organizations that can do the social for me? Yes, that's a great question. Um, yes, of course there are. Uh, I'm always skeptical. So I would, and I, I understand having to contract stuff out and it totally makes sense in some cases. Just here's why I'd be wary or here's why I'd be looking for. If, if during the, the process of meeting with them, if their questions aren't all about my brand and what I'm trying to convey and the story behind my brand, um, if that's not where their questions are focused, I've got the wrong agency or, or wrong third party to help because the questions should be all about that. You know, who are you? What do you stand for? What voice do you want us to use? And that needs to be consistent in your communication all across all digital marketing. Sure, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about a lot of these things, whether we're doing it or outsourcing it, you know, but for like a budget for social media, what should it cost? What's feasible? You know, um, what does that look like for, you know, from a contractor perspective? Yeah, let me think about that. So the reality is you can be effective on your own without spending money, but you're going to spend time and, and time has a value to it, right? So to do it well, you are going to spend time on it without necessarily spending a lot of money. If you decide to do advertising, so right now I'm mentoring a very small business. It, it, it's a it's a company, it's a one-man operation. Um, it's an online school for coding for kids. I've been mentoring him for a year. And it's pretty awesome. He has a tiny budget. So he will spend in a month around $150 on social ads. And he is getting outstanding return on an investment on those social ads. As he grows, he will invest more. But at the beginning, no matter your budget, you experiment with a small amount of money. Mm -hmm. You know, you experiment, does this work? And then if you're getting great return on investment, great ROI, you're making the money that you can put back into reinvesting it into growing it. And pretty much for every market initiative we do at Legend Brands, we, we do that kind of the same way, even though the scale's much higher. You know, is this working? If this is working and we're getting phenomenal return on investment, well, yeah, I'm going to feed that, that particular campaign a lot more money. Because I know the conversion on it is so high, I'm, I'm just going to be making money by feeding it money. But we never start out really big and say, oh, on a hunch or on intuition, uh, we're going to invest a ton of money in this and see what happens. Got it. Great. Thanks. Intuition is not, a, it doesn't apply to digital marketing. So that's, that's, a, that's a big way, uh, maybe a good way to end it. So a lot of us have been doing marketing for a very long time. Um, and, and we understand traditional marketing really, really well. And where I see people make huge mistakes, and I'm talking about big companies with giant budgets, mm -hmm. where they make a mistake is they apply traditional rules of marketing to digital. Often the rules are night and day different. I'll give you one example. With postal mail, you can buy a list. You can send to that list. I got to my mailbox. It's filled with junk mail. I don't get angry. I just throw it away because we've become accustomed to that. So intuitively, I should be able to buy an email list. It's the same thing, right? No, we're way more protective of our email inbox. If you send to me without permission, if I forgot I gave you permission, if I don't like your content, if you send to me too often, I don't like you. You're a spammer to me and I'm not going to do business with you. So, so buying a list was counterproductive. I spent money to make people angry at me and to alienate them to where they'll never do business with me again. Intuition, intuition fails when it comes to digital, including social and email. Got it. No, thanks for the presentation. I think we're we're about out of time, but you know, I just wanted to say thanks to to Legend Brands, thanks to you, Ron, for all your wisdom and your willingness to share with us. Um, you know, one of the things that I really took away is just the 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 notation of you know everybody thinks it's just a price game nowadays, whereas you know the 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 data you had, you know, you're not competing on price when there's a relationship and that relationship is positive. And however you go about creating that. You know, I think that's a, a huge thing and, and something that is not overly time consuming from a resource perspective to build that. And so, well, selling on price, Mike, is is easy. It's sure. it's simple. It's lazy. Selling yeah. on value where you really make money uh, takes a little bit more investment and a little bit more skill. 
But gosh, that is the way to go, especially knowing that people are willing to spend 67% more for the same service if I feel like I have a connection with the people at that service. That's humongous. Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. And again, I appreciate your time. Um, do want to let everybody know that this recording, as well as the first recording, primarily on email marketing and this on social, will be on the Clean Facts website uh, and, and for your consumption at any time. And then anything else you'd, you'd like to share as we close, Ron? No, just thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Thank you, ISSA. Thank you, Micah. This has been a blast. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.